Why are fathers told uh, do not provoke your children in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 21 We understand that uh, the apostle Paul basically summarizes his instructions concerning Christian family life in four concise directives Wives submit your uh, submit to your husbands it is as it is fitting in the Lord Husbands love your wives and do not uh, be harsh with them. Children obey your parents and everything for this uh, pleases the Lord. And fathers do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. That is Colossians chapter 3 verse 18 to 21. And the word for provoke in the original Greek language means to irritate or to arouse feelings such as anger, hurt, shame and fear to the point of uh exasperation and other translations render the phrase as do not as exasperate or do not aggravate or do not give to resentment or do not nag or do not embitter and the image is a uh, of an overbearing disciplinarian who constantly corrects and rebukes a child for every little mistake or perceived wrong such a father will provoke his children the greek word translated discouraged is found only here uh in the new testament it speaks of becoming disheartened or losing spirit according to a Uh, a handbook on Paul's letters to the Colossians to, and to the Philemon such a a discouraged child will close down his heart and hide uh, inside himself the child feels that he can never do anything right and so gives up trying there's a problem and the term father in Colossians 3:21 speaks directly of the male parent of course the rule Uh, not to provoke one's children ought to encompass both the the father and the mother but Paul reminds us that fathers hold the critical responsibility as a head of the household all right and we understand according to uh, uh, an article that I I was just reading here about uh, from Anders M all right is a uh, uh, So, so I, I think someone who did a commentary he said the christian father is not overcorrect or harass uh, or he should not harass his children or they will become discouraged which basically refers to a listless sullen resignation or a broken spirit and to be discouraged as a child means to think things like i'll never get it right or all it does is just criticize or he'll never love me And John Newton is reported to have said, "I know that my father loved me, but he did not seem to wish me to see it." Christian fathers should be sure uh, their children are sh- uh, should be basically Christian uh, fathers should be sure their children are as sure of their love as they are of their authority. I don't know if this point is clear. You can show your authority so straightforward, but can't you also show your love so straightforward? What you promise is what you give. Don't promise what you can't offer. Don't say something that you cannot fulfill. Don't just always wake up and show anger over and over. It's only the aspect or the angle of anger which is seen from you as a parent. No, it should not be like that. And of course, yes, children are called to honor and obey their parents. Even as the Bible told us in the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 12, the Bible says, "Honor thy father and thy mother, and uh, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord God has given thee." That that's okay. But also see, it also explains the same thing that is the old testament let me show you also the new testament still children told to obey their parents and then i'll show you what exactly is needed for the parents also okay 
Yeah, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 to 2, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Now, why is it being said, honor your parents in the Lord? Not just honor your parents, but honor them in the Lord. Because we understand in the uh, today modern society, there are parents who are doing evil things because maybe they, they are not believers. And they, they can tell you to honor them by being like them. They tell you, okay, um, I'm, a, um, I'm a murderer. I want you to be a murderer also like me. So are you going to honor your parent out of the Lord? Or are you going to honor your parent in the Lord? You see, it's very, very important to understand this. Because sometimes parents can be way away against God and they want their children to be like that. So are you going to trade your salvation? so that you can honor your parent in something which is not right. That's why we are told to honor our parents in the Lord. In the Lord. Mark those words. All right? Colossians 3.20 also tells children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. All right? But parents must not abuse their authority. They must treat their children with dignity, respect, patience, and love. And parents are called to encourage their children. They are to do this by teaching each child the principles of God's word and promoting life-affirming positive creativity in the child, stirring him to have confidence in his God-given uniqueness and to believe that he can do what he otherwise may have never achieved. Endless criticism, emotional and physical neglect, and overly harsh discipline will uh, def defeat a child's spirit. One commentator uh, wrote, uh, and I quote, Constant nagging produces a situation where children are discouraged either because they cannot please those they love or because they feel they are of no worth to anybody. Such provocation is not of God and will uh, crush a child's heart to the point of his become of uh, his becoming fearful, timid, and withdrawn, and he will grow up disheartened, lacking the necessary confidence to succeed and believe he can uh, be all God created him to be. In a teaching on uh, family relationships to the Ephesian Church, Paul exhorted fathers, and he told them, "Do not provoke your children to anger." but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now, there, friends, there's something that I need you to get here. It's just to be in the ways of God. In the ways of God. And I want to insist this because there are people who are feel so low when maybe they went against their parent who was trying to push them into something which is ungodly. And you say, no, 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 dad, mom, I, I, will not, I will not agree to this. And they felt, oh, I've disobeyed my parent. What will happen of me? What if maybe your parent is pushing you into incest? You're a daughter. Maybe your father wants to sleep with you or something like that. And uh, you're asking yourself now, do I agree to this so that I can not displease my father? Or do I stay away from it? You see, it has to be in the Lord. In the Lord is the bottom line, is the strong point of this. So if somebody is pushing you into something which is not in the Lord, please do not comply. <laughs> the Bible is very clear. Because uh, even Jesus himself, he said, He that loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. If you love your parents more than God, then you're not worthy of Christ. Christ should come first place. First place. If you love your sister, your brother, or your, your wife, or your husband more than God, then you're not worthy of him. You're not worthy of God. Why? Because everything should be centered on Christ. All right? And we understand, according to Paul, when he says, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, the language suggests a positive, nurturing, and faith-infused environment where children will see their father as a genuine, 
committed person to the Lord. Not just any other person out there telling you to do evil things so that you can say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm following my parents. Uh, no, it's not like that. We should be the light. We should be the light, all right? But of course, this is not to make people not disrespect their parents. No, respect them, but in the Lord. And parents, especially fathers, they play a critical role in representing uh, God to their children. Just as the Lord disciplines those he loves. Hebrews 12 verse 6. Okay? Mothers and fathers ought to discipline their children, but with love as their primary motivation, so that afterward there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. The book of Hebrews 12 verse 11, he tells us about that. So growing up in a Christian home, is meant to be positive foundation building uplifting experience where parents start uh, children off on the way they should go even when they are old they will not turn from it the bible told us in the book of proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old he'll not depart from it you see the reason why you're seeing uh you hear like for example uh, have you ever heard this notion that uh, pastor's children, they are always the worst. You know, they, they go against uh, everything and they decide to, you know, be hooligans and do whatever they want and, and whores and whatever it be, may be. And you ask yourself, how comes and they are children of pastors? Now, let me tell you the, the reason. This may be the reason because, you see, you don't speak something which you don't do. They, they talk about God, they talk about loyalty. Maybe you might find a pastor talks about God, loyalty, you know, believe in God, do these, uh, be a good person. They preach one thing, but they do another. And remember, children are watching. They are watching and they don't do what you tell them. They do what you do. So if they see you're a hypocrite, you're an hypocrite and you do what you want or what you desire, you tell people, do not lie, but you're the biggest liar. Do not uh, do this, but you do exactly what you say, don't do. Then uh, they're just going to look and say, mm, if this is what is called Christianity, ah, I'd rather stay away. I'd rather be a, a barmaid. I'd rather go and do anything else because this is not Christianity. If this my parent does this and they claim to be a pastor, they are stealing in broad daylight. They are lying, they are doing whatever. So you should be an example to your children because they watch what you do. They don't listen to what you tell them. Actually, they are, they are deaf to what you tell them. They only see what you're doing and they replicate that. And that's why the Bible says, teach them the ways of God. How do you teach someone? By showing them by example. The Bible does not say, Say to your children what is good and they will not depart. No, it says teach them, show them by example. And when you show them, they'll never depart from it. All right? And children need to see God's love and character model through their parents' lives. Such modeling will make it easier to live by the maxim to listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. Likewise, what you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. The Bible told us in the book of Proverbs 1, 8 to 9, it says, My child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. What you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. Does that make some sense? And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you didn't learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study question. And if you'd like to get saved or you need a step-by-step -step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website keithmuoki.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.